And a stronghold, I said, are negative patterns. I have to give a few minutes from last week to tie it in. Negative patterns that go in that cycle over, it's a cycle. Say, you gotta break the cycle. It's a cycle. It repeats itself over, it's rehearsed. How does it get authority? How does it get breathing ground? By rehearsing it, talking about it, and thinking about it. And setting up a pattern to, to take authority over three things, your attitude, your emotions, and your behavior. Word says that as a man thinks, shall, shall he become. What he thinks, he sets up a false belief system, any belief system, whether it be true or false, he sets up a belief system, and what he believes, he actually becomes. Watch how people spoke over you. Cycles are broken when you dismantle people in authority that spoke over you, including your parents, who may have not known better, who are ignorant just like anybody else. Didn't know. Can't blame them. They're in the grave. Forgive them. Why? Because you have to go on. Amen? You can't get tied to the past. And I said last week, I'm going to go over a few things. A, a stronghold can be established three ways. One through traps. Things that happen to you unexpectedly. Or you just, it just came out of nowhere. Sickness. Uh, uh, premature deaths. A, a sudden death. Something happened. And it caught you emotionally. And it tied onto your emotions. To where your emotions start managing you instead of you were managing it. Correct? It's not you're not responsible what happened. You're responsible how you dealt with it. Not responsible what happened. You're responsible how you deal with it. And last week I said generational iniquity means what? Generational things. Out of the Ten Commandments, uh, Deuteronomy says that you shall not bow to them nor serve them. For I am the Lord your God. I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquities of the Father. You didn't say them, but they're the Father. Upon the children to the third and fourth generations who did things that wasn't right. I'll explain that. But, say but, there's always a but, but, verse 10, but showing mercy to a thousand generations. Amen. <laughs> you, gotta, you get caught up in the first, but oh, wait a minute. Things change because of the cross. He shows mercy to a thousand generations. Amen. Yeah. So, and, and what I'm saying is this. That things that your father did years ago that wasn't right, he actually spoke a curse. What is a curse? It's a sorrow of the heart that, lead, that gives demonic spirits influence, an entryway. There's always a door that somebody has to go through. It gives them a door into your family's bloodline. When you go to the hospital, you have chest pains. Well, I went to Austin one time. I took some medicine. I thought I was having a heart attack. I had my, I was sweating like buckshot, you know, and my, my left side of my face was going down and all this. They ripped over my shirt. The first thing he said while they're giving, while they're sticking tabs all over my chest, is there anybody in your family that's had this problem? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know I, generational. Let's go back and talk. They went to the family bloodline. Okay? Medically. But listen, you got to look. Let's go through a few of them. Man, I, I said them last week. Here, put them all on the board there. Chronic, meaning long term, over and over. It's a repeat, like my wife said, it's a repeated thing in your family. It's not bad luck. It's a repeated thing, a familiar spirit, they call it, that attaches to your family. My grandfather was an alcoholic, his grandfather was an alcoholic, this one, and, and now you talk like four generations, or four generations of fear. You can see a cycle. It's a, you got to identify it. Listen, you can't, put, sweeping it under the rug will not make it go away. You have to identify and go, this is not right. There's, there was a door that maybe my great, great parents left in, and you now know truth. See, the truth will do two things. It will set you free or make you miserable or both. It will do something to you. You are transformed by truth. Because why? You replace lies. Where at? Here. Lies that you believe. You set up a false belief system because somebody, somebody, somebody told you that. When you get down to it, that's not even the word of God. 
That is not found in the Word of God. Illnesses, accident prone, female, uh, marital problem. Everybody in my family's got divorced. Somewhere along the line, we're going to stop that from happening. You got to derail the train. Say amen. You got to derail the train. Yeah, listen, homosexual, everybody, listen, everybody has skeletons in closets. Some people just have cemeteries, but some people have skeletons. That's the truth. That's the truth. Everybody, listen, everybody. When I went through my family thing, I'm like, damn, oh my God. Really, suicides. Homosexuality runs in my family like crazy. I'm like, no, 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 not in my children. Oh, no, no, no. That train was running, but, but Pauzy took authority and stopped that train. I break that cycle in Jesus' name. Huh? That little window, the door, the window. It doesn't have to be big. Give it room. Give it a crack. It'll come in and manifest itself. Pastor, you're scared. I'm telling you, listen, I'm going to give you some ugly truth today. Because people are walking around in the fog and nobody teaches about this stuff. Listen, if you want feel good messages, then we're in the wrong place. But if you want to know truth and sound doctrine, then you come to the right place. Because somebody's going to tell you not what you want to hear. Somebody's going to tell me what you need to hear. Because why? I'm tired of seeing you don't have the victory. Man, you see your people getting beat up. And you're going, man, this is just, just, just enough. Chronic illness. Uh, uh, you know, comes in. The schizophrenia comes in through what? The door of rejection. Most of your stuff comes through the door of rejection. Somehow or another, your kid or somebody opened this door. A wounded spirit. And the enemy, listen, the enemy don't play fair. And he caught you off guard. When you emotionally was not right, you were feeling bad, and you bought into the lie and go, yeah. And you bought into it. It's the bait. Say the bait, the bait. Boom. All right? So the deal is this. His truth. That the cross is more than just salvation. The cross is your victory. The cross is your victory. Listen, the blood does not only save you and redeem you. The blood will set you free. Huh? It's deliverance. Listen, we call things, oh, it's a sickness. No, it's sin. He's got bad decisions. No, because of sin, he made bad, deci bad decisions. You're right. You, you, you can't watch in the days of last that people water down the word to make everybody feel comfortable about their sin. Come on. That's indeed. Come on, Jesus. Listen. Truth. Christ redeemed. Come on. Christ redeemed us from the curse. Come on. Christ redeemed. He became a curse. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. By what? By he becoming a curse. And everyone, cursed is anyone who hangs upon a tree. The truth is this. That he, Christ, became the curse so that you can be redeemed. Amen. See, and how do you get redeemed? Repentance. What is repentance? Curse is a sorrow of the heart. Repentance is what? Godly sorrow that leads the workers to repentance. It, was his, it wasn't his wrath that led me to the cross. It was his mercy. It was his loving kindness. What? It was his loving kindness that caused me to repent. It wasn't the hammer. It was his mercy that caused me to repent. Amen? You got to break this cycle. We're going to make a copy of this next week. And what do you do? I speak this over my family. You speak it over your children. And you know your children can open up that same door. They have a free will. They have a free will. They have a will just like you. That's why you have to stay on top of stuff. Listen, you have to stay on top of stuff. Watch what your kids entertain. Come on. Watch the stuff that's so demonic. Hulu, 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 right? Says Hulu. Hulu. Says the stuff that's, oh my God. Kids are watching this. It's just pure demonic. And they don't hide it. It's just flat out. Watch what stuff entertains. Here we go. Let me get my glasses on this. Here we go. Network, yes. Network, anywhere. You just got to listen. You just can't give a kid a phone and go, and I hope you feel good about it. What? 
Somebody called me one day, my kid was doing TikTok stuff, doing crazy stuff, my grandkid. Somebody called me up, I said, what? Wait a minute, where you at in that room doing that? Come here, girl. Here, I'm gonna give this out next week, we'll make copies. Here's Heavenly Father, I repent. It's called repentance. I repent of all any sin in my life. Or maybe even my ancestors lived as a result of a curse. Didn't know it. I repent of all disobedience, rebellion, perversion, witchcraft, idolatry, lust, uh, adultery, fornication, anything, murder, cheating, lying, divination, anything that involves a covenant. I ask for your forgiveness and ask that the blood of Jesus cleanse me and forgive me. Amen. I take authority and break any and every curse upon my life in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of poverty, lack, death, destruction, sickness, death. I break curses over that were spoken over my marriage, my family, my children. I break curses of rejection, pride, lust, rebellion, incest, rape, anything, Jezebel, fear. I break all curses affecting my finances, my character, my sexual character, who I am. It's an identity crisis in America. I break every hex, every jinx, every spell, every negative word that came over my life. I break every chain, cord, and, and habit that was tied to that cycle. I break this cycle in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 See, how often you do that? As often as you need it. <laughs> I mean, Job prayed for his kids every day. Because <laughs> Job knew his kids. I know my kids. <laughs> You know your kids. My whole point is that you have authority and go, you know what? I break this by the blood of Jesus. And I tell my little ones, like, look, what, what, what does the word say? Fear not, for I am with thee, Pauzy. Yes, fear not, for I am with thee. Because why? I see it, I see it occurring. I see things happening. And I, you know what? Right there and there, you gotta, you know what? Hey, boo boo. We break that thing off of you right now. And she, and she would go, break it. Break it. Break it. You got to do what you got to do with your kid and not break that cycle. Right. I don't care what you do. They, they break it over their knee. I break you over my knee. She'll pussy. Pussy. I cry chopping. I'm going, go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Because why? I'm going to get that in them now. And that when they lay years later going, oh, my God, the, the tree bloomed now. It's got some. Come on. Get it now. Get it young while you can. You're the parent. You hit your grandparent. Take authority. But here's the word today. Here's the message today. Here's the message. A stronghold will come in today because of, because of unforgiveness. I'm going to speak about forgiveness today. Father, right now, I ask that you would just show. I'm not, this is going to be truth. But it's going to hurt. But it's going to make you feel better because you're going to go to the cross. But this is what can stop you from being the person that you need to become because unforgiveness will halt every spiritual growth in your life. You will stop growing spiritually, relationship with God, people in the church, you will separate yourself. Then you, you will believe a lie saying we don't fit here. Nobody told me hello. Where did that come from? You see what I'm saying? And here we go today. So you ready for this? Here we go. Here's a door that will keep you from, I think this is a door that will keep you from being healed. I think this is a door that will keep people. And you know what? We can pray to the cows come home over you, but until you release that door, it blocks every blessing. You understand that? Intercessor can pray 24-7. But if you're holding something against somebody, you have locked in that blessing. It is like it will hit this ceiling and come back to nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're wasting your time. You know, forgiveness is a choice. Say a choice. choice. You got to choose. And you know what? You cannot do it in yourself. Amen. I try to get more, uh, I try to get more self-will. No, that's the problem. You got too much will in you. Your will got to die. And the Holy Ghost has to take over because you can't do it. You got to first confess, I cannot do it in myself. You got to identify it. I tried. I did all kinds of things. In fact, I made it worse. Because why? 
I, I, because I believe that the cross was not enough, so I tried to fix it. See, I tried. Listen, here's the word. You cannot fix what the Holy Ghost wants to do. Sometimes you're in the way of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you as parents, you're in the way of the Holy Ghost. Oh, uh, yes, indeed. Everybody looking at me. Oh, start the car up. Sometimes. Sometimes you, why? Because we are the biggest enabler. Because why? We don't want them to go through anything. It's called hurt. But here's the, I think this is the, this is the Holy Ghost right here. I believe there's a lying spirit that attaches to unforgiveness. There is, they pair up, and I believe this is Holy Ghost, that there is an attachment of a lying spirit because why? When I choose not to, to forgive, I give the enemy a legal ground to enter with a key. And guess what? He's a party buddy. He comes with an SUV full of people. And one, here it is. This is, I'm at the, the, it is a lion spirit. And what does a lion spirit will do? It will convince you, the victim, that we don't have to forgive because it tells you you are actually punishing the one that gave you the pain. Let's go back on that. You missed it. The lion spirit will tell you, the victim, that as long as, as long as you don't forgive, you are punishing the person who gave you the pain. You, you see? But it will tell you that you're punishing somebody. But in reality, you're punishing yourself. And that's the thing. In reality, you think you're hurting. I'm going to tell you something that nobody's going to tell you, boo. You, I'll, I'll get in further. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. What happened was, it tells you this. My mind says, I want them to feel what I'm feeling right now. I didn't cause it, but I want you, I want them to feel what I feel right now. And the problem is, their mind is on Pluto. You ain't even their solar system. <laughs> you think they are in bed at night going, mm -hmm. honey, look later but this is that this is what happens unforgiveness will attach with a lying spirit and attach itself with a spirit of bitterness this is the i'm exposing an suv today that comes in it's a package deal and the lying spirit the unforgiving spirit and the bitter spirit will it wants to do one thing it wants to result in vengeance This is brutal because it wants to take vengeance over the person and I want them to feel every ounce of pain that I felt and it looks like they got away with it but the party ain't over yet. I told my kids, look like they walked sky free, honey. It's not the beginning of the chapter, it's the end of the chapter that counts. God turning around, God turning around. I said that to my kids, God turning around. Come on. I said, now look at this, boo. You got a good husband? All this and all that. Because why? You chose to let God deal with it. Amen. You see, you got, the end result is that it wants control. It wants to make you the person that you don't want to be. And sometimes the hardest thing to do is you have to forgive yourself. I think sometimes, like my wife tells me, you're the hardest person to ever deal with. You're holding yourself. You're my God. The devil don't have to box you out. You box yourself to death. You beat yourself up. You beat yourself up in my mind. I speak. Listen, you, the hardest thing sometimes I can give so and so, I can't forgive myself. How did I let myself get into that? How did I go for that? How did I let myself go for down the tube? How did I let myself get so depressed? So how did I let my how did it happen? A door. A door. A cycle came open. And choosing not to forgive will actually cause your spiritual growth to stop. It, 
I'm going to give you the words of Jesus. That's why, that's why sometimes the message doesn't get to me because there's a blockage. Because you in bed at night scheming how to hurt them. I've been there. Well, they didn't go to bed at night. You pace the floor all night and they sleep on it all night. Who's got the problem? I'm the victim. How did, how did you get away with it? Because you harbored it here and allowed it. So now you try and think, if I can catch him on the side, I will, I will knock him out. I will knock the fire out of him. I may pray for him tomorrow, maybe four days from now. I want, to, I want him to experience what I'm feeling. And this is stronghold. And this is why you can't get along with people. You, you, you don't fit anywhere because your relationship is being cut from every corner because God has to honor his word better than how you feel. God has to honor his word more than what you feel. Jesus, look, on the cross, look, on the cross, Jesus said this. While hanging on the cross, the same people that Palm Sunday was Hosanna in the highest was yelling out the following we crucify him. What? The same people that lifted you up were the same people that would tear you down. And, with, and on that cross, as they spit on him, everything, what did he say? Jesus said to the Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Some people just don't care if they hurt you or not. But you have no right to hold that against them. Because as a believer, your rights went on the cross. Your rights went nailed to the cross. <laughs> We give people authority too much. In Matthew 18, there's a story of an unmerciful servant. I'm doing on time. Let me know. The story said that the, the story said that the person went to a king with so much debt, like 20.5 million in debt, and the king forgave him. That was mercy. You were on the cross, your sin was on the, on the cross, and how much did your debt of sin cost you? I have no idea, but it was probably a, pity pen, a pretty penny. You were forgiven and all, the servant was forgiven and all that. Then, just moments later, someone owed him 20 bucks, and he grabbed him, and he shrank, and he give me back. And the word got back to the king. God, listen, word got back to the king. God don't sleep. Word got back to the king, and the king said to that servant who was forgiven of so much, I forgave you of everything, millions, and you couldn't forgive this man of one thing, what I have forgiven you of lot. And then the word said, this is the word, this is Jesus speaking these words. Let's go to Matthew 18, 34, 35. And Jesus, this, and Jesus said this, in his anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tormented until he showed payment that he owed in full. And Jesus said this, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. You can lip service all you want, but when your heart does it, it's a different story. I forgive someone, I forgive someone, and as soon as you say the name, oh, wait a minute, you know, something here in the heart go. It's a hard thing to do because you can't do it in you. That's why you need the Holy, you need, the, you need Jesus, you need the blood of you. you. You cannot do it in your strength. If you could do it in your strength, then the cross was for nothing. See, this is where we're going with. I got this, there's a book, uh, 
Years ago, T.D. Jakes, it said, it's called Let It Go. I bought it because of that movie, the, uh, what's it called, Let It Go, what's the Disney thing, Let It Go, Let It Go. Well, I decided, hey, you know what, it sounds like a good thing to read. And I started to read something in that book, and it said this, this is T.D. Jakes, not, not me, I'm just giving you a quote. Anytime you, bring, you are being controlled by your emotions rather than controlling them, you allow yourself to go into a prison without walls, without, without, without bars. A prison cell without bars. And then some remain incarcerated for their entire lives, while all the while the king keys to freedom are dangling right in front of their face. Woo! The keys to freedom are right there. They dangling in front of you. But you said, no mercy. And so it has the keys right there in front of you. So here's where I'm gonna go with the two things right here. One is this, you're trying to collect somebody, you're trying to collect something from someone who's uncollectible. You try, this is, here it goes. The truth is this, it's truth is that some things in life happen and you must forgive without the benefit of an apology. It is for your own good and not the good for the other person. Amen. What he's saying is this, you're, try, you're waiting through some Facebook, social media, you're waiting, in the, you're waiting for somebody to write you or call you on the phone saying, hey boo, you know, back then, I'm sorry. You really wait in front of an apology. And let me ask you, I'm gonna give you ugly truth. You're not in the person's solar system. I'm a, you're not in the person's solar system. They can, they can care less whether you live or die or breathe. But yet, you're the one that is getting breath and life taken out of you. Man, you can't do it in yourself. Because in reality, I'm going to take a baseball bat. <laughs> I'm going to show them pain. And I realize how much pain did I show on the cross? How much sin debt did I have that Jesus said, forgive them, for they do not know what they do? Those who have forgiven of much know how to love much. We are waiting for an apology. And we're trying to collect something from people that are just uncollectible. It's like when the people send you letters at your house that they're gonna threaten to sue you about something and you ain't got no money in the bank and they keep sending letters, eventually they go, you know what? We're just wasting our energy and time and posters and stamps. Why don't we just write them, write them off? Here's what you need to do at times. You need to put somebody's name down on the paper and you need to write them off. You need to put the name on a piece of paper and write them off. Shred it. Delete it. Burn it. You need to attach every evidence. Listen, I put many listen, I put many names on a piece of paper. People that I thought loved me, crushed me. You know what I had to do? For my own good, I had to write it off because I was trying to collect from people that can give a happy rash tale about what you do. <laughs> Why? The only way you can collect, it's the only way you can collect your energy and move forward by writing them off so that you can focus on what is ahead of you and not keep on talking about what was behind you. Some things well, we just can't talk about anymore. When some people bring it up, kill it. Because why? It causes me to have bad dreams the next night. Because why? I rehearsed it with my mouth. And I realized, dang, I should know that by now. <laughs> I should know that by now. But you fall into the bait, you fall into the trap, and you just fall into it, and you go, oh my God, what did I just do here? Let's not talk about it anymore. Sometimes we just have to cut some things off. Why? Two things. Let's close out with this. You gotta love them from a distance. 
Love them. Say, love them from a distance. Love them from a distance. What that means. The lion spirit tell you that we're going to be happy, we're going to lunch, go to lunch every week, and we're going to make everything right. No, it's not going to happen. You, you're living on Fantasy Island or Disney World somewhere. Let me bring you back to ugly truth. It's, we're going to go to lunch every week, and we're going to do this and that. Love them from a distance. Say that with me. Love them from a distance. What that means. I wish no harm, but we're not going to lunch next week, boo. Forever. Why? Because sometimes people cross over your threshold, your line. And they violated things, your space. You want to hear, you, you want to be, you want to hear more? They violated your space, regardless. And once they violated your space, either the Holy Ghost can make it right or you're just going to have to let it go. Because why? We can never go back to what was. Because why? The, because I forgive, but the memory is still here. And my man, this is truth. Oh, I, you, you. And here it is. Not that they are bad people. They just crossed the line. They, let, they overstepped their boundaries. Say that. You overstepped your boundaries. You got too nosy. You went into a place. And therefore, I'm going back. And listen, I wish nothing. That's how you know you're all right. I wish nothing bad on you. I don't curse. I don't lie. Well, he's getting what he does. No, I don't speak it. I don't say that word. Because why? I can run then, boy. Like, I speak no evil against them. But if I see him ever again, okay. If I don't see him ever again, it's pretty, pretty good too. Love him from a distance. Listen, I, I need a start. Third, fourth message. Start cleaning out your closet. Coming up. Start blocking people on social media. We're going to get together to this week. I'm, I'm a, why? Oh, I got 550 friends. No, you don't. You got 500 acquaintances. You got 25 friends, and some of them on the borderline on the bubble. I got 750 friends. I noticed that on my Facebook. I got more friends than in the church. How can I have 700 friends? I don't know 700 people. Come on, am I seeking truth here? It's pride. You don't have 700 friends. You got. 650 acquaintances. You've got 25 really good friends, and some people you don't know if they're going <laughs> to delete or not. You're this close to being deleted, pal. You're this close. <laughs> because why? Because you don't need, because you know, I don't need to follow somebody on social media and bring up something. So you do? Pastor went home, passed a clean house. I blocked about 100 people off my phone. Why? Over the threshold. I wish nothing bad about you, but if we never ever talk again, why? Because I need to get healed. I need to get healed. I need to get healed. Young kids, same thing. Five minutes. Okay, good. Here we go. The benefits of forgiveness. Come on, the benefits. Transform and use your relationship with God. Guess what? The wall gets broken down. Now you and God are on the right track again. Release the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. You tied up the Holy Ghost because he will not go against your will. The Holy Spirit will not go, he will not strong arm you. He said, you want to go there, pal? You go there. I'm not going in there, but you go there. It releases great joy and peace. That's Romans 14. The, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you're not feeling this right now, there's a stronghold. Identify it. It is what it is, man. It resolves and recalibrates your mind and emotion. It's like hitting the, the restore key on, the, on your computer. Yeah. Refresh key. And we, what did he say? The joy of the Lord is my salvation. And he re, David said in the song, and Lord, you refresh my spirit, and the joy of the Lord is my salvation. That's what David said. You renew my spirit. Release his favor. Come on. This is where we release his favor. And this is the six and seven. Your prayers are now being answered. And you simply see what you believe.
Jesus said, what? If you don't forgive, then my Heavenly Father can't forgive you. And that's why now your prayers are being stuffed. But when you forgive, it releases an open heaven. And now it goes up. And now the answers come back down. Man, Pastor, you are brutal today. Well, you know, it's truth. See, you're transformed through, for, through forgiveness. The hardest thing to do is let go and let God. God, it's so hard. But you need to go home and you need to start cleaning out some of your closets. Huh? Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Lord, don't do it out of bitterness. Look, Lord, I need to just, I can't follow him on social media. I don't wish nothing home about him. But here it is. Close out with this. It's not that they are wrong. It's that you and them are going on different paths. It's nothing against anybody. It's just that you're going this direction and I'm going this direction. Neither one are wrong and neither one are right. We're just going in different directions. And here's what I learned. Some people are for seasons. And you want to make them lifestyle. Some people are seasoned. Is that good? The Holy Ghost? They're there in this time, but the Lord is taking you on a different flight. And those people won't fit in your plane. You understand what I'm talking about? Those people won't sit, they won't fit the seats in your plane because God is giving you people that will fit those seats because why? They're looking out for the best of you to go to the next place. That's it. That's it. Flying first class. Flying first class, baby. You're flying NC, no class. I've been there. I've been in the last seat, the bathroom left. I said, my God, I'm, out. I'm just full out the plane. Time's up. Huh? Time's up. Time's up. Stand to your feet. Because now you got homework. You go home and you got to think. Yep. And next two weeks, I'll show you how to get rid of some people. Not, and I mean legally, not illegally. <laughs> I don't mean one way going down or out. This is not the Godfather movie. <laughs> now, you're not going down the road. I'm going to the that crock that got alligator down there. No, 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 you're all right. It's called writing, people, writing it off and let them go. Your homework assignment is going to be very, very easy, very hard. But get a piece of paper. Start writing names. And don't share with nobody. Share with no one. And burn it. Delete it. Shred it. Shred every bit of evidence. Huh? I had to have a funeral for mine. Yeah, my wife, my, wife, my wife had to have a funeral. <laughs> she, she, she buried it in the backyard. She went out in the backyard. Listen, you got to do what you got to do to make it right, man. I mean, what are you doing walking out with a shovel? I'm burying somebody. I left. I'm like, you ain't me. But she said, no, I gotta bury something, D. I gotta do a spiritual gesture. I gotta bury something because I can't do it no more. So Father, right now in the service, I thank you for it. And you gotta write it off because you are collecting from the uncollectible. Father, right now, do it. And I ask for God, the Holy Ghost, to work on your life. And next week or so, start writing these down. And guess what? I guarantee you, you will find freedom. I guarantee you freedom will start coming in you. Even young people, rather write them off. Why? You go in places where people can't go. You go in places where people can't take you. Write them off. In Jesus' name, amen.